a discipline equals freedom like you gotta force yourself like get up and do it yeah you don't want to do it oh then the best thing for you is to do it it's surprising how much of a well of energy mm -hmm. you can dig yeah just by you know building your cardio yeah yeah so even if you did like 14 miles earlier in the day yeah daughter comes running in the room and says daddy you got to come find me or come catch me yeah you can jump up a lot easier oh yeah than you could if you have zero cardio there were only ever a few things i was ever good at that made me feel good about myself and this was one of them yeah and i know it's gonna suck because that first mile always sucks. Yeah. And you know what? The hundredth mile always sucks. But the thing about running is whenever it sucks, you still did more than like 99.9% .9 of people out there. Today's conversation is all about running. And I'm sitting down with fellow 2004 Altoona High graduate, Shane Kaler, who I hadn't talked to in probably a decade or so. Uh, but you know, me putting out videos like this, we reconnected. He asked me to go get coffee at the Clay Cup. And when we were there, I remembered that Shane ran cross country, so we jumped into the topic of running. And maybe you're like me, I always hated running. Uh, I would have never clicked on a video like this. The uh, thought of going for a run absolutely made me want to puke. I used to kind of scoff at the idea of taking care of my health. I would mock death. Um, but as I become a practical old man in a sweater and uh, I, I start thinking about the way my body doesn't spring back the way it used to, uh, running has entered the picture for me. And so today you're going to get a conversation that has two different perspectives. Shane ran when he was younger competitively. Me, I didn't start running until I was 32. So I started running whenever I was in junior high. Um, it's kind of a fun little anecdote there. I don't know if you ever did the uh, the summer courses or anything for like gym class. I never did. That never made any sense to me. I See, I did it so I could take like the AP courses and like cram in more. I was just a book nerd. So I okay. wanted to be able to cram in more like higher learning. Okay. So I did, uh, I did summer with the uh, the kids that failed <laughs> and the band kids. Yeah. Um, and I remember the, the first summer I was like, you know, I need to do more sports because uh, the, my dad showed up to pick me up. And because of the competition that was around me for a summer gym, the, uh, the gym teacher thought that I was like a good athlete, like it made me look better. Uh -huh. So my dad showed up to pick me up and gym teacher goes, your boy's a real athlete. And my dad goes, my boy. <laughs> And I was like, I need to get outdoors more. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's how that started. Okay. But, uh, yeah. So that was what, like mid to late 90s. I got started running and yeah. uh, horrible times, like couldn't do anything, but yeah. ended up competing then by my freshman year of high school and just like took off from there. When did you like it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was a window, but like a couple years after I started to a couple years before I quit. That's, that's about whenever yeah. I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> Getting back into it as an adult, I'm like, I, I can find that sweet spot again, but yeah. it definitely took a few years to get there. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're familiar with like you sent me your times and stuff, like yeah. how long you ran, the times you're hitting, and even like your average mile pace. Yeah. Um, put it in perspective, my, uh, my 5K, the first time I competed in a 5K, it took me 38 minutes and like 32 seconds. Oh, wow. And okay. That, that was after like a whole summer of like training every single day. Wow. By the end of that season, which the cross country season isn't super long because it starts in the fall and you have until like winter hits. Yeah. Um, by the end of that season, I was running like just a little over 17 minutes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So that's whenever I was like, okay, I can do this. <laughs> yeah. Um, so coach uh, at that time was Baranek. Baranek. Yeah, he okay. was a cross country coach. Um, yeah. Junior high, I started with Eisenberg. I don't know if you remember the yeah. other teacher. Oh, yeah. Yep. He was actually the, uh, the running coach then. Okay. And what are they? What are they? I guess how are they guiding you? What are they saying when you're bringing back your times, or uh, well, how I mean, are they encouraging you? Yeah, that's actually interesting. So to to start, because I mean those did, those dudes couldn't even keep up with me, who was running like a, a 39 minute <laughs> 5k. Yeah. Um, but so they they weren't there with you for it. And to start with somebody like that, they do not like distance or anything like that it's like okay you're gonna go out for five minutes yeah. like that's it just five minutes and we're gonna see how you do 
So you just go out, you time yourself like two and a half minutes, you turn around, you come back. Yeah. Um, so that was actually encouraging because they're just like, we're, we're not going to throw you in with these other animals because they have, you know, there's all these kids that are just bigger and stronger, faster than you. Yeah. And when you get into that point, especially at that age, one year is a huge maturity difference. Yeah. And there's people like, oh, they look down on you until you can actually like hang with them. Right. And then that becomes the encouragement from that point on. So you get a little bit of coddling and that helps because you're scared, you're young. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, I can actually like, keep up with these dudes that used to scare the crap out of me. Yeah. And it's like, what's next? So you go from a coach coddling you, then the acceptance is what encourages you. And then it's like, oh no, I'm, I'm a runner now. Yeah. And you encourage yourself. Yeah. So that's, that's a lot of self-worth in running, which I'm, I'm sure you're aware of now. Yeah. You just feel different. So when, when you're describing those early days, like my only familiarity back then was like doing the mile. Other than that, <laughs> I, I would have never the, tried. Yeah, the presidential fitness. Yeah, yeah. yeah and and I, I think I was, I think I always got national. I don't know if I got okay. presidential. Um, I was, I was looking that up. Man, because, I don't even remember if there's a distinction. Uh, yeah, one's, one's better. Because <laughs> one just like you participated. Well, a presidential was always like a little harder okay. than, than national. You actually had to show that you could like stretch and touch your toes. Yeah, yeah. There was, there was, yeah, the sit and reach. Like two pull up. Shuttle run. <laughs> pull ups was very, like all of them I'm, I'm pretty, pretty good on. Um, the, the run though is still like, I think it's like a six minute and a half mile or something like is that. Is that what it was? You, when, was when this... you're like 17, it's okay. each age is, it, you know, it gets, does it go up or down uh, as you get older? Um, down, like it, it's harder okay. you need to go faster the older you get. And then I think the cutoff is like 17 because once you're 18, that's interesting. Yeah. I feel like the older you get, like the more Even difficult at that age? it is to hit those times. Really? Well, so there's your your muscles in your body like have such a unique way of growing. Yeah. Like if I hadn't started so young with running, I could have probably peaked a lot faster. Like yeah. if I had started later because of your muscle development, like you grow and you're able to do much more than like an adolescent would. Yeah. Think of like a tiny dog running with a huge dog. Yeah. Like the huge dog's going to beat it every time. But there comes a point where it's like, all right, now your body is like kind of set in its ways yeah. and you've got years of just like eating poorly yeah. sleeping poorly yeah. just bad habits plus now you're on that downhill side like oh you're not growing anymore yeah. you've hit that plateau now you're just like packing on weight you're going to deteriorate from this point <laughs> on yeah so it's just it's a weird juxtaposition like yeah. you get that sweet spot yeah so like you getting into running whenever you did like, yeah I admire the shit out of that dude. When you, I'm, I'm so proud every time you send me like your yeah. times and your runs. I'm like, yeah, you get it. Meanwhile, I'm just like, I should be out there right now. Yeah, well, I don't know if I'm uh, if I'm helping or hurting your your cause. Uh, and you're you're helping because okay. I, I've I've had this lull with all my different moves and stuff. Like I. I really got back into it before we moved back to Altoona yeah and it's just been so weird coming back into town and like my priorities have switched yeah. where I, I lost focus of my own upkeep yeah just focus on more people like other people yeah so I I need to get back into it and I'm like yeah I just need to pull the trigger yeah. which I don't know um have you ever heard of uh Jocko Willink yeah oh yeah okay yeah. Uh, you you mentioned Rogan earlier yeah I don't know who Jocko is. <laughs> um uh what is it discipline equals freedom have you read yeah. that yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I I consume a lot of audio books. Okay. Yeah. So. That'd be a, a strange audio book because it's just like bullet. It's like a PowerPoint. Yeah. The way that book's yeah. written. Yeah. Um, but I mean that that's definitely like a huge motivator for yeah. me. Yeah. And it's something like I keep on my desk. Too. Yeah. Um. So even with my current profession, like there's a lot of, uh, let's say similarly minded people to the area that we live in currently, like politically and stuff. So people see that and they recognize that. And it's, yeah. It's definitely like a huge motivator for other people too, because they know like, okay, this guy has a mindset where he's got to get up and do something. Right. So like, I just started flipping through that this morning. I'm like, all right, I'm getting up at 4 a.m. tomorrow and I'm just going <laughs> to go at it. Like uh, no dessert for me tonight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that that's, uh, if I have, well, I still have vices for sure. Uh, but yeah, there's nothing wrong with I, I, that. We're, we're not professionals. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of the things that I always do, which is like the side effect of, I don't know, I'll, I'll like, I'll look at my app. It says I burned 1,500 calories, and I'm like, all right, what are you I'm intaking? going, I'm going to have donuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you intake at that point? Right. There is like that weird thing too, where even if like you're not at a competitor level, like 
you can be by definition anorexic yeah yeah just based on you're burning way too many calories for what you intake but you could be relatively healthy too yeah and, and i think that's an important distinction too for reading you know jocko's books yeah because some of the stuff that he says like my, my wife is a nurse and she flipped through the one day and she was just like he says you can go like a month without eating that's not healthy <laughs> yeah so i'm just like that might be a little hyperbole but like yeah if it's nine o'clock at night and we're going to bed at like 9 30 10 o'clock i'm not gonna have a few slices of pizza i'll just wait until tomorrow right yeah yeah and i think you have to be able to regulate yourself at that point and like yeah. keep yourself in check I, have you done like fasting type stuff um interesting you say that I, that was one of the the notes that i had here um so the fasting if it's not for like a religious purpose, I mm. think I consider it then more of like a fad diet. Mm. Like fad diets are never healthy for you. Um, but with fasting, what I would do and I actually what I recommend sometimes for other people that are getting into running and like my nephew and his friends, like they're starting on teams and stuff. So like it's yeah. super cool. Um, but with fasting, I, I what I recommend is go like gluten free for like two weeks yeah. or do like gluten free and or dairy free for like two weeks. Um, a lot of times those things are used as like binding agents. So you don't realize like how many products those are in yeah, and how yeah. many products it's pointless to be in because formulas have changed, but like old habits die hard and there's still money in like keeping these groups together. Right. Um, so like, I mean, there's gluten in your shampoo. Yeah. Well, my shampoo, you might not need it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I usually just use, uh. I'm an all-in-one body wash and hair. So, but that yeah. stuff is so heavy. That uh, if you go like two weeks without it, you notice a difference. Like you'll feel lighter. Your bowel movements are a lot easier. Okay. Um, and that can actually make a difference too of like if you're feeling just bogged down and you can't pinpoint why and what habit you've got. If you think you're hitting all the, the right points, checking all the right boxes, but yeah. you still feel sluggish on a run, just put out gluten for like two weeks. Okay. Or like even dairy because like our body's not, used to or to processing those types of things it's not natural to us right so right. very heavy and very difficult to, to process and it does bind you up too as yeah. much as it does these products that you're intaking right so like don't worry about fasting just cut that out for like two weeks but there's a lot of people who will say like you don't need gluten this that and the other thing it's not actually bad for you yeah like, you don't have to cut it out completely but yeah. you'll notice a difference if you go just a few weeks without and then get back into a normal routine Okay. So fasting, I don't know so much about, but I'm not an expert. I'm not a dietitian. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you remember uh, Ashlyn Holsinger. Yeah. Oh yeah. Also not a dietitian, but she was uh, she was actually in my um, she was one of my groomsmen for my wedding. Oh. Um, but she's like super into food and cooking Is and she like in holistic stuff. California, San Francisco. She was. She was in San Francisco for okay. a while. She's actually in Seattle now. Oh, okay. Yeah. So she's in Washington State. Yeah. But she's like super into that stuff, and I'll just like shoot her a message and be like, you know, I feel this way, or I need to feel this way. Like, get me back to baseline. And okay. She'll just she'll give me like recipes, dietary stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. Like, right. find yourself a dietitian. Don't worry about it yourself. It's way too confusing. <laughs> <laughs> when I told you, cause, so I knew you ran cross country, mm -hmm. um, and when I told you that I was running, the question you asked was, "Am I annoying the crap?" Out of you? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, like how, you can't you can't describe to other people how you feel because you just sound like kind of crazy. Yeah. But I mean, I definitely like I'm I'm sitting there after like a run, like mm -hmm. a seven mile run or something like that, and it's just like you know whatever drug you've done uh it's it's just this calming yeah. uh clarity L like you like you took something almost oh yeah and it and there's waves of it all throughout there is the hours after mm -hmm. yeah um so i i don't i don't know like um if if i was if i was telling somebody um the benefit of it i i would say it there there's it's seriously in my adult life there was a before i found running and there is an after and and yeah that's like a definable line for you basically the the yeah the person that i was before not you know not like i flipped the switch and became a different person but i've gradually changed uh my daily just routine um and, and the energy levels that i that i have throughout the day the way i think um i think it's all kind of 
gotten better since yeah. I, I started doing longer runs. So, so like clarity of mind is what you're saying? Cla like, clarity and, you know, energy. Um, like how you approach your day? De like depression, yeah. you know, like uh, I don't have kind of the anxiety that I, I feel like a lot of people sort of get. Yeah. Um, the anxiousness, the, uh, the worry. Um, I feel like well, when there's I... a lot of proven science behind that, too. Yeah. Um, I mean, just, you know, the, getting the oxygen flow through your blood, like running helps get that into your bloodstream. Mm. Um, when you're operating on even like an anaerobic level, then, you know, you build up a tolerance to different types of things that, you know, your lactic acid in your muscles doesn't build up. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of that can contribute to depression and stuff like that, too. Yeah. You know, even just like... You know, saying how gluten is heavy and it can bog you down. Uh, a lot of this stuff, too, not flowing through your veins properly will bog you down. Yeah. And what do you do? What what cycle does that get you into? But when you get up and you run, like you said, you're approaching your day in an entirely different way. Yeah. Um, you know, and that goes back to to the discipline equals freedom. Like you got to force yourself, like get up and do it. Yeah. You don't want to do it. Oh, then the best thing for you is to do it. Yeah. Like push yourself through it. And right that is a mindset that a lot of people don't understand yeah. so even how you were saying like that runner's high like there is a physical feeling to it but the i think the mental feeling is what is like has been best for me yeah and to your point that was like you know combating depression and stuff like that i mean yeah. the the winter dregs is seasonal depression for sure absolutely you know, and how yeah. do you defeat that it's, it's a difficult thing to defeat whenever your routine is what's got you stuck yeah but you can keep a routine just include some exercise yeah I, I can tell you uh, night and day because uh, last year I wasn't doing this. Mm -hmm. I, I I was you know I was still in a running phase, but I I I I was very uncomfortable when I go out in the cold, and yeah. so I'd like bundle up and like the whole experience just was. You bundle up to run? Yeah, like I I would layer up and like really kind of throw on a bunch of stuff run and like throughout the run it was very uncomfortable yeah. i wasn't enjoying myself and so it was like and i wasn't training for anything like this this time i said i'm going for a marathon so i'm on a schedule so before it was just do i feel like going for a run now that i'm on a schedule where i have to be accountable to myself mm -hmm. and you know i'm doing it with another person that's on the same schedule um you know it's like no, I have to get out there. I have to yeah. schedule. And it's really inconvenient. Uh, like, there are many days where I'm like, oh, I yeah. don't have time to do this. But looking ahead, tomorrow it's supposed to rain. If I don't run seven miles today, I when am I going to do it? I'm going to do it butting up against the next day that's supposed to be 16 miles. So, And the best way to reach a goal is to have somebody that's pushing you like you were saying yeah. right? somebody to that's either has the same or similar set of goals mm -hmm. feeding off each other and it could be like direct competition or practices or just going on like buddy runs or yeah. something like that you know it, you don't often realize i don't think how much more you push yourself when there's somebody there yeah. that uses encouragement whether it's conscious or not yeah what, what got you into it in the first place um so Kind of, I don't, I don't know. So I, I, th I was thinking about this leading up to <laughs> this conversation. You didn't bring your notes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, no, I would say that getting older, um, you know, I was down in Florida and I went down there when I was in my late 20s and I was still, you know, looking for something, spending evenings at the bar till close. Um, still smoking, um, still doing other things. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, there just comes a point where I, you know, you see plenty of memes about this, that you get tired. You, you get, you, one day you're at the bar at, at one o'clock in the morning and you're just like, uh, I could, my bed feels like it's forever away. And all I want to do is get back there. Yeah. And so you start slowing down in, in your later twenties. And so, it wasn't like right away I got tired and I was like, I need to do something. But it was like kind of gradual. Like, I don't think a lot of people come to that realization <laughs> easily on their own. No, nah, it's impressive. They'll just keep, they'll just keep drinking. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate. <laughs> I mean, it just, you, your, your hangovers get, are, are longer. Uh, your recovery from everything is, is worse. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think 
somewhere in my early 30s, after a few years of experiencing that, um, we bought a home in Cape Coral, Florida, and it just had the perfect neighborhood of quiet. You know, it, the street was laid out so that it was like a perfect Give circle. Give you a very easy plan. Yeah, and it was like it was like if I did two laps around my block, it was like a mile. Okay. And and my very first, I think it was like 32 years old. Um, I'm 38 now, and my very first run was uh, 0.98 of a mile. I was I was so close, <laughs> and but I was so gassed. I was like, yeah. I was like, I I hit it. I thought I think I'm close, and I just stopped. And I'm like, you know, the whole time I'm running, I I was like sprinting for one, and I'm looking down at my phone like, when's this gonna stop? When's this gonna You're stop? And I was a lot like, of energy that you shouldn't have been yeah. expelling. Oh but yeah, you don't know that at that time. Exactly. Yeah. And so that was my first run. I'm not. I think I was just like. I need to do things because I smoked for years. Yeah. Uh, I know that I have ignored cardio and I, you know, I start, as you start to get older and maturing, you start to recognize, okay, I ignored this aspect of my health. Why was I out of breath doing that very simple task just now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I wanted to see what it would, what it would do, what it would feel like. And I can't remember. I, I remember thinking that first run sucked. Um, and I remember thinking, like, you know, I just, I'll, I'll do a mile. Yeah. Started a mile. If I do a mile and, you know, mix in all the other stuff that I do, like, I'll be happy with that. But I think, like, I, I got to a mile and then I, you know, I just did another lap. And then it was like, I'll do another lap. And a 5K, which was 3.1 miles, mm -hmm. that to me, when I was, like, in those early days, I was like, no way. I'm not, I'm not going to be one of those people that like can get to that level. That's lower that middle distance. That that's seemed not long distance. So, <laughs> dude, it se it seems so overwhelming and yeah. daunting. I was like, no, 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 no. And then just kept adding, like, a ha you know, another oh, lap no, you around. Sent me some things. I'm like, oh, 14 miles a day, huh? <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, that obviously took a little yeah. while to build up to that. But w within, I think it was. Probably like two years was when I uh, did the first like half marathon. Okay. Um, so from. So you have done half marathons before. Have done official half marathons. Where did yeah. you uh, Where did you do those? Uh, the first one was key. Well, I did one, you know, without uh, official, but uh, the first official one was down in Key West. Okay. Um, that one was really fun. Uh, you know, through the streets. Yeah. Um, you know, where Hemingway and yeah, all that's the. Awesome. Yeah. I actually have friends down there. Yeah. 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 Dude, it's a cool town. Yeah, former co-workers down there. She just moved down there with her fiance and yeah. uh, like some famous artist dude. It's super yeah. cool. And um, Bob DeBarlow moved down that way. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I he uh, messaged me a little while back. Uh, I forget. Seeing if you were still there. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Digress there. Yeah. But yeah. the uh, so you did what were most of your competitions then lower elevation? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that was <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a that was a big eye-opening thing. All all of Florida bit makes a lot of difference. Florida is sea level. Yeah. Florida is flat. Uh -huh. There are zero hills in Florida. There might be like a bridge that you have to go up for a few seconds, but moving up here was insane. Uh You noticed the difference? Very Oh, very much so. Um I didn't like it at all. I still don't like it at all. Like I feel it takes like a lot to adjust. Well, and it's hard for me to gauge like what's what's uh what's what's my time now because mm -hmm. when i come down off the, i start every run at almost like a full sprint down the hill yeah you're like at the crest <laughs> of the hill up here <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that. so my first mile will be like low sevens and then like i have to throttle back uh yeah. after that so i feel like the hills just kind of mess up my times um, yes and no. You got to come back up at some point. Yeah. And that's at the end of your run when you're gassed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't like hills. I, I, I would say that. Uh, yeah. That's the difference between you and I. I love hills. <laughs> you like hills. I used to work okay. hills so much, but that was yeah. a that was a coach Baranek. But thing. both both downhill and uphill, you enjoy uphill. that. Uphill. That's where I attacked. Really. But Attack. I'm, I'm not built like a runner. Like you're more of a runner's build. Okay. Um. So I actually I. There was a lot of like genetics that we had to learn, like, and that yeah. wasn't a Baranic thing. That was um, 
Uh, there was a guy that used to run in town. They, there's actually a marathon in his name now, Angie Jayosa. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm familiar, yeah. Yeah, he was the coach before Baranek. And you, when we were kids, you probably saw him just like, he was just a bag of bones, like an ancient dude. And his yeah. run was like, his, I mean, his gait was just like this. He's like shuffling, going like slower than you and I would walk. Yeah. But his resting heart rate was so low from just a lifetime of intense cardio yeah. and training yeah. that he wouldn't like he, he would have stopped. He just would have died if he had yeah. like a perfect day of rest. Yeah. Um, but that was like his thing that he instilled. Like you got to learn to attack these hills. Okay. I mean, being in Pennsylvania and going to competitions mostly Pennsylvania based, it's all hills. Yeah. So uh, me being a little bit taller. Like, I could attack the hills because I had the long gait. Like, just, it wasn't necessarily more of an effort. I would just lengthen my stride and push. Yeah. Um, but with the, the genetics thing that I was getting at, you're built more like a, a runner. It, like, competition running, people think of, like, the Boston Marathon and stuff like that. Yeah. Or even just, like, on a track. I mean, when you look at those places that they highlighted the Boston Marathon or on a track, like, it's all flat. Yeah. Um, so there's, what is it, the, I think it's TTN. Uh, yeah, TTN is the, the gene. So there's like a lot of different genes that Angie Gioso is just like, science, learn the science. <laughs> um, but like it didn't matter because we didn't have these things. But what he was instilling in us is like, how do we overcome this? How do we compensate? How do we train to beat this? Right. Because uh, running like any other sport is only like 44% genetics. Mm -hmm. That's your predisposition. That's not half. Like right. the rest yeah. is all you. Yeah. It's all your yeah. effort. Yeah. So figure out what people have as an edge and then work on that. Okay. So TTN is this, um, it's this gene that is bone structure and shorter people are actually more inclined to have a better bone structure. Like even just sitting here, I don't know if you noticed me, like I corrected my posture because uh, yeah. I was I, looking oh, at I'm you so and bad. I, <laughs> no, but you were better than me. I was like totally turned uh, in and like yeah. curled up. And I was like, oh man, you know, that's my lanky ass. I need to get back. <laughs> like that, that's, that goes back to that competition thing though. Like let other people push you. I observe your posture and I was yeah. just like, he's outdoing me right now. I gotta, I gotta straighten up a little bit. <laughs> I, but you're, you have a, a natural inclination to that because of your genes. Okay. And that comes into running too. I mean, yeah. I mean the, the lower your center of gravity, the shorter your legs are, the faster your turnover has got to be to hit those things. But you have that natural turnover too. Yeah. I mean, as a kind of a contrast to that, um, I, I think the shorthand for it was like ACTN. Okay. Um, like action three is uh, is another gene that like is common in like Kenyans. Okay. Um, Usain Bolt has it with like yeah, it's a it's the twitch reflex. Uh huh. So it's that explosiveness, and that's what makes him a great sprinter. Mm -hmm. That would be like the contrast to the the TTN, or not even the contrast. It's kind of supplementary. Um, if you look at some of the people that I competed with in high school, yeah, like Wayne Hooper was one of the best runners we had. Oh yeah, and Wayne was your size or shorter, right? And he just had like the most explosive turnover. But the five k to your earlier point isn't a long distance run. Yeah, it's it's a lower middle distance sprint. Right. Yeah. And uh, Wayne had that red, explosive red line twitch, the whole time. and he had the bone structure. Yeah. So he had like these two things working for him, and I yeah. had to figure out how to beat that. And hills. Hills. Yeah. Those little legs, you're not getting up that hill as quick as I am. Okay. Yeah, downhill, like, that's the scary part to me because you just let gravity take over. Yeah. If you're competing on a downhill, like in your marathon, if there's a downhill, yeah. just pick up your feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't I've, worry about putting your feet down. I've pick heard them up. lean forward. Yeah. Yeah, just like kind of yeah. almost like, gravity like fall deliver. down the yep. hill. <laughs> yeah, just pick up your feet. You're just yeah. dropping. Yeah. I mean, if you try to do anything else, like, you're going to get shin splints. Yeah. Okay. Because there's too much resistance. Yeah. MCTI or MCT1 and EPAS1, mm -hmm. um, those kind of go hand in hand. Think um, because a lot of this is like regional too. Like people have a predisposition just because of you know who's mating with who. Okay. Uh, so like that's why in Kenya like they they're more inclined to have that that action three. Uh -huh. um, but in Peru, they have a different predisposition to genes that just hyper oxygenates their blood. Okay. You know, high altitude. High climbers. altitude. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, high altitude training. That's why I was asking, like, oh, okay, so did you only compete lowland? Yeah. What you're doing right now, training for a marathon right now, go back down to Florida. Yeah. You're gonna feel phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I, I no, I I would imagine I would, and yeah, um, yeah I'm I'm probably gonna pick something um, that is like you know sea level. <laughs> yeah, I mean <laughs> that's flat. that's how you compete against that. Yeah. And one of the ways that like, if you don't have the option of training in the high ele high elevation, just go for like anaerobic training. Mm -hmm. Get that oxygen debt. You need that oxygen debt, and the fastest way to do that is find the steepest hill you can. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot around here. <laughs> I can show you some. I can show you some real good ones. And yeah. if, if I don't know how you feel, if you have a preference for like, um, like street bursts, you know, like on a track or something with a little bit more cushion to it. Yeah. Um. I definitely. So, ran 14 last week, mm -hmm. and I would say that it, it's always kind of the first thing that. Not not that I ever like give up, but when I'm like. If I'm going to run a marathon, I think the first thing that would cause me to stop would be the, like, leg pounding. Like, it feels like my legs are, like, kind of just, like, yeah, it's, it's like, the constant pounding. Um, my feet, uh, yeah, like, calves. Um, it just feels like it's being, like, kind of, like... Uh, like destroy yeah, too much wear and tear too, too much too much pounding uh no no <laughs> uh think about it yeah yeah um yeah i mean when when so take me back to when you were learning mm -hmm. how to run like do they observe how do you just go and they just observe your stride and oh, your absolutely. foot your foot strike and things like that yeah so it's um it's kind of difficult for one coach or even like two or three coaches to observe every behavior of the team at once because yeah. you don't send a kid out on a run on his own and yeah. like follow along on a bicycle or in a car and just observe that kid. Yeah. I mean, they didn't follow, period. Yeah. They just had the older kids show what the routes were, you know, trace back all the way to land before time, whatever. Um, but... The, um, do you ever go to like a really good shoe store? I know like this is a weird question, but yeah, like there there's a difference between like a shoe store and uh -huh. like people that actually care about your feet, like, yeah. like as much as Quentin Tarantino would care about your feet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good reference. Uh -huh. I know you're a movie guy. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. no, I got it. <laughs> um, like Rapid Transit Sport and State College. Okay. When you need new running shoes, yeah. which if you don't have insoles and you've been wearing the same running shoes like since Florida, uh -huh. go to Rapid Transit Sports. We'll go okay. together. Okay. <laughs> they will watch you run. Yeah. They will give you a pair of shoes to try on, and they're going to take you outside and make you run up and down the block, and they're going to watch you run. Wow. Because you can, like, you overpronate. You can roll one way or the other. Yeah. Like, not everybody runs the same way. Yeah. You know, and you can be coached how to run heel toe yeah then you can be coached on not expelling too much energy so you straighten out your form instead of like flopping an arm around when you run yeah don't let your head drag you can be coached on all that stuff right but you can't be coached on your natural gait okay you know you're you're gonna over pronate or under pronate you're gonna roll one way or the well, other just so if somebody was listening to this what is what does pronate mean um pronating is that roll so like you know if if this is your foot when you run mm -hmm. when you step you might be going at an angle okay one way or the other gotcha so you can be coached to run heel toe but you can't be coached on like running on the inside or outside of your okay. foot gotcha um, that, that's just something people naturally do the only thing yeah. the only way to really correct that is to keep like a forrest gump style brace on that's going to uh -huh. keep you from going one way or the other and you got to wear that for years okay that's not you're not going to train or compete in that type of stuff yeah. um, but they will give you shoes uh -huh. that are going to help you do that so it's just it's really interesting like how much certain people actually care about it and that's that's a good shoe store like these people are gonna like treat you right and they're gonna okay. get you in the right pair of shoes and cool. um, that's where i learned about the heel lock whenever you were like yeah <laughs> yeah yeah what what is that um so a heel lock well there's something called runner's toe and remember you told me that like you might be losing a toenail or two right, and i was yeah, like yeah. he's got runner's toe yeah. like i know what that is yeah. um I mean, and that's more than just like keeping your toenails trimmed, which any runner knows, like keep your toenails trimmed. So you, <laughs> you know, will there, cut yourself. There was definitely because I didn't have and I didn't do much research. Mm -hmm. um, you're telling me right now more than I've probably, you know, discovered on the Internet. Most of 
I, I've read a, I read a few books that were more inspirational, less technical. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, everything you're kind of telling me is, is, is new information to me. Everything that I've kind of arrived at was arriving at just by experimenting on myself yeah. um, and, and, that's, and kind I mean, of feeling how you get I get a lot felt. of stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like bloody toes. And yeah. I'm like, oh, like my toenail was literally like carving into my yeah, other sometimes toenail. Sometimes you don't even notice it. I mean, yeah. you, especially when you get into oxygen debt, like you're not feeling some of the extremities of your body, especially. And in like, yeah. you know, acclimate weather or anything like that, and that's the last thing on your mind. You're going to notice like chafing on your nipples before you notice anything right. else. Yeah. yeah. Um, but with your, with your toenails and, you know, it, you are stimulating a lot of blood flow too, just from that movement. Mm -hmm. And like, you're going to, if, unless you have like a fungus from walking into the showers after a race or something without any sandals on, you're stimulating a lot of growth too. And like the, uh, it's the same thing that your hair is made out of. Yeah. Uh, the, what is it? It's not uh, a K. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. What you mean. Escaping me now. <laughs> but you're stimulating growth in like those cuticles and everything. So your toenails are actually growing faster than they normally would. Uh -huh. um, it might be like a negligible amount, but you don't notice these types of things. So you're out of your routine. It's like, you know, I, I never think about when I have to clip my toenails. Yeah. I think about it whenever I'm just like, oh, there's some blood in my shoe. Yeah. Like, yeah. I need to take care of that. Yeah. But a heel lock is for something different with runner's toe. Um, a lot of times, even if there's like no room to slide in your shoe, you're still sliding in your shoe. Your toes are hitting something. They're hitting okay. the end of your shoe. Um, so maybe you need a wider shoe or you need a more narrow shoe and that's you know these places can help you figure out like okay do we need to give him more space is his foot wide do we need to like keep his toes from rattling around make it more narrow yeah um but maybe there is not a fit for you it's like a you know, you're unique not you're not always going to find a shoe that's going to fit you so you do like a relacing of your shoe uh -huh. and you kind of do it um backwards from what you normally would whenever you lace them up you go on the outsides of the eyelets okay. in so it can pull it in a little bit tighter instead of going like against the grain so to speak and pulling it outward yeah, and then <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, i'm thinking like huh. yeah um, but then whenever you get to the the top of the shoe um the way that you tie it you don't even go to the last eyelet usually it depends on how many eyelets you have but you can tie it specifically so it really just like holds that shoe still against like your ankle and locks in against your heel okay um with the extra shoelace you have from missing the last eyelet you go around the back Okay. Um, you can cause some rubbage there. It depends on the type of shoe you wear too. Like you got to figure out, you got to experiment with it and do what's best for you. Yeah. Um, but you can actually lace it a different way. So your foot doesn't slide forward and you're not jamming your toe into the front of your shoe. Right. And then it's not going to turn black and fall off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, my, I'm not going to show you, but yeah, the, the middle one on my left is definitely yeah. like black and blue, um, kind of beat up this one on my right. Is it like under the nail? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, like the whole sliding forward and, and yeah. hitting the end of your shoe. Then, well, I was gonna say I definitely am not consistent on the socks I wear, and you know, like uh, I think. Did you ever try I... turning your socks in? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're Did good. You ever try turning your socks inside out? No. It's like the seams, okay. the way that they're stitched up. Yeah. The extra bit, like you know, in a seam. Yeah. Is on the inside. Right. Okay turn it around the other way you have a more flush or you have like a, a recess yeah. instead of something sticking into your into your toenail okay something. yeah try turning them inside out okay yeah i mean i so i went with like when i ran i think if the the longer run i think i was like kind of medium thickness in the sock and then the fall i did a four um monday yesterday mm -hmm. yeah very thin like almost no sock and yesterday definitely felt like toes were sliding forward in within the shoe and i i, I felt worse yesterday after the short run uh than i did and you didn't wear socks on the short run is that what you're saying it's very thin like almost pay, okay. you know like almost no sock. i feel like you, and it, it's a personal preference and yeah. you'll it, People do all kinds of stuff. Know your body, do what's best for you. But as a personal preference, like, I need socks. They do that. <laughs> <laughs> they do that. Yeah. I'll know soon. Yeah. Right. But yeah, it's, it's a personal preference. And I don't know. Are we outing all that? Or? Uh, and we told our family, and that was like the okay. big thing. So there's not been like an official announcement. But okay. Yeah. 
Congratulations. Thank you. Everybody. <laughs> when are we due? Uh, end of August. August 29th. Yeah. So just in time to take the baby to festival season for music and <laughs> okay burning man and all that that might be a little extreme but yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay very cool yeah do you know what it is yet um no i think we find out uh like first week of april okay wow yeah That's very cool it's dude. gonna come fast yeah no it's <laughs> it's amazing yeah i uh another reason to get back into hey, running and... right yeah <laughs> Um, well, there, stay healthy. I mean, there's a lot to be said about that. Um, I mean, I, I was, I kept thinking of things building up to this and yeah, why, why do I keep running? Um, why now in my life? Because one of the reasons I, I wanted to talk about this was I feel like more than ever, I'm seeing people on, on Facebook, uh, just friends of ours, people that are picking it up now. Mm -hmm. um, not you know people that like me weren't running ten years ago. Yeah, suddenly just decided it, to it start. Does seem like there's a there's a new life breathed back into the sport. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not sure if people just are on the same train that I am, or or maybe you're just noticing it because you're getting into it. Like right. You, yeah. you buy a new car, and then all of a sudden you notice more people driving that exactly. Same car. Yeah, that's probably it's probably a little bit of both. Um, but it's it's good to see. Like I I definitely get encouraged um, every time I see other people doing it. I'm like, oh, they know. Yeah. They they they're feeling <laughs> what I'm feeling. Like. And I definitely see um, like a higher contingency of people running with their kids. Yeah. Yeah. Like little kids. Yeah. It's mind boggling. Yeah. But there's something to be said about that too. Like, yeah. is that kid gonna hate it? It's like forcing a kid to eat broccoli whenever they're growing up. Right. And eat broccoli as an adult. Yeah. Well, and she was, so she kind of, she was in the stroller. Now she's not so much in the stroller, but that was, I never did an official one like that, but I used to, I used to run around like, you know, our neighborhood, just push with her. The stroller? Yeah, with a stroller. And that was, that was cool. Like, it was an experience. I thought about that. Like, would it be, would it be fun to do like, I don't know if I do a half marathon like a 5k would be fine maybe start with like the yeah. relay for life mm -hmm. what's that oh that's, uh, that's well, a... well i know what it is like uh how long is it oh it's you get sponsored so it's however long you can do oh okay yeah gotcha. yeah. yeah it's like one of those things people pledge like you know i'll okay. give you 10 cents a mile yeah and then you just see how many miles you can do so you can okay. go at your own pace and you can vary your pace and just stroller or have like a little kid run around with you but yeah um i mean that being said, too, and that's another reason to get into it is like keeping up with your kids. Yes, yeah, and yeah. it's a huge thing. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, like, she is at the age now um, where she's three, and it's I'm gonna put I'm I'm running into the room. You count to ten. Come find me. And it's like you know you know after a long day, you're laying on the couch watching TV, and it's like come on, you got to get up and like go play. Um, it's surprising how much of a well of energy mm -hmm. you can dig yeah. just by, you know, building your cardio. Yeah. Yeah. So even if you did like 14 miles earlier in the day, yeah. daughter comes running in the room and says, daddy, you got to come find me or come catch me. Yeah. You can jump up a lot easier oh, yeah. than you could if you have zero cardio. Like you might be worn out from that 14 mile run, yeah. but you can jump up and do it. Yeah. Yep. No, yeah. and that, that's um, you had asked me before. This was a while back about you know the, that feeling and like distinguishing yourself. Like, do you think that you act differently or able to do more? How would you compare it to when you were younger? Mm -hmm. and that was one of the things when I was younger too. Like, I had an easier propensity to to jump up and do it. Right. Now I have to work for it a little bit more. Yeah. You know, just like there's a predisposition with genetics, there's a predisposition with age too. Yeah. You know, there's that window where like you're this is going to be your peak performance. Yeah. Unless you work your ass off. Right. Like, I'm going to have to work harder now than I ever did then. Yeah. But it's possible. Yeah. I mean, you picked up you you quit smoking. Yep. Yeah, I, I was never, I was like social smoker. You like and, so much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I was like a few Marlboro lights uh, and a few uh, Bud lights right before, right. Right before <laughs> bed. Um, 
that was kind of a routine. That was your, that was your midnight snack. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was just kind of a way to drift off to sleep. It would make me nice and tired. Um, it yeah, felt I like. See that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so that would be. I did that kind of deal for like. Now, after college and then through you were filling in the well you weren't digging the well yeah point. yeah right <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a good way to describe it yeah, yeah. that's what it is yeah and you, you gotta work well, a little well, harder so, now but... yeah what was your so going back to you were competitive in high school what yeah what was what was like the absolute uh most you were going hard like what was you're going to meets and tournaments and all that sort of oh yeah yeah, yeah. so um Cross country was the, the big thing that we trained for. That was our big season. Yeah. Right. At the high school level, there's not much of a season outside of that unless you're like some crazy savant and you know, you're competing at Olympic level. Right. Um, there is professional runners out there. Um, I don't know like how much you know about like the professional running world. Yeah, I think you've read like some you said you've dabbled yeah. in some magazines and stuff like that. Yeah, no, not much, I guess. It's like anything that isn't the NFL, NHL, MLB, stuff like that. Like the, you get sponsors. Yeah. Um, so unless kids were at that level, which is like extremely rare, then at the high school level, it's cross country. Yeah. That's like the big thing. So we did spring track, we did winter track, and then the summer we were just left to our own devices, which what we did was we just banded together and we would go like to all the different counties yeah. in Pennsylvania and sign up for these races yeah. and just embarrass the townspeople, um, which was like definitely arrogant, but so cool. <laughs> right. <laughs> Especially yeah. when you're like 16 uh, yeah. years old yeah. and you're rolling I'm, up I'm like sure a clown is... car of kids. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I feel like I still see yeah. you guys there's there. That... <laughs> <laughs> there's the, there's always that local runner that like everybody knows like, oh, that's Dr. So-and-so yeah. and his hair is like perfect at six in the morning. Uh -huh. and, He's got like his taco meat hanging out with an Italian <laughs> horn and you're like, oh, this is the guy that blows everybody away. You can yeah. see him doing the basketball thing and like licking the bottom of his oh, yeah, shoes yeah. to like do nothing. Yeah. And then this clown car of little kids rolls up and just destroys them. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a great feeling. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what? all for the fall season for cross country. So that, that's what we trained for. And like I, I went to uh, States a couple times and then okay. I, was a, I was an alternate for nationals. Okay, wow. Okay, and what, and what is that? So, like, um, you're running every day. Like, what is what does oh, yeah. training look like when you're competing like that? Um, relatively unhealthy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, at, at that age, that's a lot of taxing that you're putting on your body. Yeah. Um, it's. I mean. I have zero cartilage in my knees, and that oh, that's man. that goes back to like 17 years old. Yeah. You know, to a point where coaches were like dumping out entire bottles of like Tylenol and Advil, and they're like, "Eat all of these right oh now, God. so you're wow. good in like 45 minutes." Yeah. And I'm like, "All right, jeez." And, like swallow them all down. Okay, so I shouldn't feel too bad if I take a couple before a long run. Not at all. Okay. I mean. And, and my, if my wife watches or listens to this, too, then oh, yeah. she'll just be like, don't yeah. do that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just like, yeah, that's fine. You're okay. Yeah. Like, it's I, not good for your stomach lining to do right, that many yeah. and I've, that I've often, heard that. But I, and I try. I try like hell not to if, if take you, anything. If you really need to pop a few, like, yeah, take like two or three, yeah. like maybe like once a week. Yeah. And that's not going to do anything to you. Right. Maybe. 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 <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, my um, my times got like you know really low and really competitive right around um, I don't know, end of my sophomore year, mm -hmm. and then my junior year, like it definitely carried over. I think I kind of plateaued a little bit. Senior year, I started to notice like way cooler things than running, and <laughs> yeah. I, I had like this body that I was just like, all right, like I'm I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can hang out with like this girl, or yeah. you know. I can go and do these things and be like the wild man and yeah. have some energy left to spare. Yeah. So things started to be on the back end at that point. But yeah. that was it, uh, sophomore and junior year. Like that was the peak of my running career. And that's where a lot of kids, I think, peak too. Yeah. And not even just because the mentality, like that definitely has a huge thing. Yeah. Senioritis is real, even in sports. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But like your body too, like you start to, if you're training that way, you're training yourself to peak. At a certain point, mm -hmm. and they, you only really get one best peak in your life. Like there only is one true peak, one true summit. 
Yeah. So if you hit that too early and you destroy your body too much, like you're you're not really going to bounce back the way that you want to, and that can be heavy too at an older age. Oh yeah. Um, and you still snowboard and stuff, right? Uh, I will. Um, <laughs> but the yeah. idea of getting back into it is like I can't do what yeah. I used to. <laughs> I think it's I, it's more been like um, you know, like. <laughs> Uh, how do I say this? I don't know. It's just like the cost, and I don't know. I I, I don't really have much of a desire to. Like I would yeah. go if it was like, you know, people wanted to go, and there was like a group of us going, and we were deciding. But like, I don't need to find that time and like okay. make sure it happens. Like I I don't feel like anything's missing like, in my life. You mentioned a few I, like people from like Scott Boris and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. So like you're going out there and you're doing this stuff too, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. So I feel better about myself. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, not everybody has that uh, that Rocky Balboa moment. Like yeah. you're not always going to be able to bounce back. And like when you hit these new highs, these new peaks, so to speak, it's not going to be the same summit as yeah. whenever you were at a certain age and a certain time in your life. Yeah. You know, you can't regrow this cartilage in your knees, but you can train and you can do things to to get you know, as close as possible to that same level. Yeah. And there's, yeah, of course, there's going to be freaks out there that are going to just like blow right through that level yeah. and they're going to be able to do these things. And yeah. to them, I say, F you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wayne Hooper uh, definitely was, I, I see his name at uh, like the, is it the uh, NGG uh, 5K yeah. or, yeah, on, on uh, July. July fourth. I'm glad he's still doing stuff. Yeah, I, I think he's he's still running the five k. Um, I think he's yeah, he, still pretty he fast. Kills he's at like the five k. Yeah, yeah be... five minutes something miles. Well, and or again, whatever. too, like that dude is built for running. Like yeah. I wasn't built for running, so yeah. I can only speak from an angle that makes me really jealous and talk really bitterly about <laughs> these types of people. <laughs> what I will fabricate all day. What <laughs> when you you quit. Or when did you stop? Um, I stopped competing my, uh, it would have been my, oh yeah, my freshman season okay. of, uh, of college. Okay, so you yeah. went into college doing this. Yeah, so uh, I actually got money to do it at college. Oh, okay, wow. Um, yeah, I, I got noticed apparently and they gave me money and then they didn't notice when i quit and i still got the money so i was like <laughs> why do i need to bother yeah there's beer over here okay. <laughs> where did you go to school iup iup okay yeah. very cool and you got what do you call that a scholarship uh yeah i got some grant money it wasn't okay. a full scholarship i um i got money for a lot of different things yeah. that you know helped out academics and athletics yeah. were both in there w so. when you when you stopped running, did you notice a difference? Um, it took a long time to notice a difference. Really? Yeah, one of those things where like there was a difference too, I'm sure. And I, it wasn't until like I woke up one day and was like, "Oh damn! Like I can't do what I used to." Yeah, yeah. And that it was probably way too late at that point. Yeah. Um, getting back into it was a journey. Yeah. When did you? How, like, what age were you? Um, how old are we now? 38? 38. 38, yeah. <laughs> I was about Class 36. Class of 04? <laughs> I was about 36. 36. So yeah. just a couple of years ago, you yeah. were... What What made you say... Um, I mean, not too dissimilar from some of the things you were describing. Yeah. I was definitely uh, falling into a depression that yeah. I, I just needed to do something different yeah. or it was going to end very badly. And I was like, well, there were only ever a few things I was ever good at that made me feel good about myself, and this was one of them. Yeah. And I know it's going to suck, because that first mile always sucks. Yeah. And you know what? The hundredth mile always sucks. But the thing about running is whenever it sucks, you still did more than like 99.9% .9 of people out there. Right, yeah. So no matter how badly it sucks, it's like, yeah, it sucks, but I did it, you didn't. Yeah, exactly. Dude, I think that all the time, not this, not to be like, oh, I'm I'm better than everybody, but it's not that hard. Like, and it's when difficult you, to when explain you, it without sounding like an elitist. Yeah, like you said, <laughs> you sound like you're trying to be better yeah. than everybody, but it's like most people are not doing this, and right. it's like it's an accomplishment. If you get out the door and run anything, 
Yeah. You you beat most of America <laughs> yeah. today. A lot of America yeah, today. And it's funny because I run with like a giant flag. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. You'll see that before you see me come up over your head. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Shane's coming up. Yeah. <laughs> I can yeah. hear him puking all the way from his house. Yeah. <laughs> the second he sets foot outside his door. Yeah. So uh, I mean, I've asked you to go for runs, but you're still you're still getting there. You're still getting. Yeah. There. Well, and that's that was too about just knowing your body and knowing your limits. Like yeah. what you're training for right now, I would hinder that the second I would get out there <laughs> with you, because uh, yeah. I've had too much uh, of that break. You know, my focus has been on my parents and their yeah. health, but in that, I've been neglecting my own yeah and and maybe you can relate maybe you can't but i need to kind of get in my own headspace mm -hmm. to be able to you know assage that out of there to exercise my own demons like i need to hit the bricks on my own yeah for you know like a week or two yep and then i won't have any shame puking in front of you but yeah. i need to be able to do that on my own first yeah. Oh, yeah. um so i i mean i did that this week already so nice yeah i, I got some gutter filled down there that's yeah. all right Good, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I mean, I, I've never really, besides that, like, first time out, I really never, like, I think the first thing I learned was, like, you shouldn't be out of breath. You shouldn't be dying. That's not necessarily <laughs> true. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I guess if you're trying to set the world on fire with yeah. 5K it, time. It depends on what your yeah. goal is. Because, yeah. um, I mean, realistically, when you're competing, yeah. if you finish that race and you're not sucking air like yeah. you didn't try you didn't dude. try hard enough yeah. <laughs> like you're competing right now yeah. you should have given it your all like yeah. you, you don't want to crawl across that finish line but one of the big things that um angie jayosa always said Baranek always said it is run through it not to it yeah like if you're just coasting yeah you're not you're not yeah. doing it right yeah is that why you're asking me about my splits and all that like is it you should be... Well, I was mostly... Sorry, finish your question. Yeah, I, I guess, <laughs> like, um, you're measuring, trying to be consistent on basically emptying the tank at, right when you're, you know, like, you don't want to be eight, eight mile, seven mile, six mile, right? When you're, you know, yeah. or mile, you know. Yeah, you want to you wanna empty the tank as kind of evenly as possible. Yeah. Um, you want to start a little heavy on the gas mm -hmm. and you want to finish heavy on the gas yeah everything in between you need to fall fall into this pace that you're just a well-oiled machine yeah. at this point and there is too much and there's definitely too little okay um so figuring out your pace you're going to be able to train harder train better you're going to get better times and you're going to get further distances yeah so especially you going for like a marathon the the first thing that you're gonna run into is you're gonna you're gonna bottleneck or you're gonna be trapped behind people. Yeah. So right. Oh if, yeah. If you're yeah. in like that first third of mm. people, there's gonna be a choke point at some point. Yeah. Even if it's it stays the same width, it could just be a turn. Yeah. There's gonna be a choke point yeah. because you're always gonna wanna take the shortest distance. You yeah. want the inside track. Yeah. But you need to get out ahead so you don't get stuck behind the turtle head I've, I've always not been at the front and i'm always like, like standing waiting there walking yeah you're you're walking for the first couple like minutes yeah like you can't move yeah. basically and now think of how you've trained like how far can you run if you're doing your best like and you said minutes yeah so two minutes yeah how far would you be in those two minutes right. if you didn't have to walk yeah well it, i mean can't you go by um Chip time and not gun time. Wouldn't that be the way to kind of feel better about yourself? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. But do you? <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. I've I've always I think I've always had yeah I've always had somebody with me. So yeah. I don't think we were like <laughs> hey so we we need to get up there with those people that are literally going to be sprinting. Yeah, well, the maybe start. the next marathon yeah. I'll run with you and yeah. I'll be like. You're working to it, kill this yeah. person. Up here. Well, was I mean, was that how you guys would kind of like go to each other back in the day? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we knew people's names too, like yeah. our competitors' names, even if they were from like states away. We knew like, okay, this kid's got similar times as me. Yeah. I'm gonna figure out what his number is and what his stupid haircut looks like. <laughs> and I'm gonna make sure that I only see it once, yeah. and then it's behind me. Nice. Dude, yeah, that's and awesome. that's that's just what you do. But yeah. that's so you don't want to get caught 
in the funnel. Yeah. You know, call it whatever you want. Choke point. Um, we called it the the turtle neck. Yeah. Or turtle head, which has multiple meanings. Right. But, um, and then at the at the end of it too, now you get such an adrenaline kick when you know that finish line is there. Yeah. That it doesn't matter if you don't have anything left in the tank. You're going to push harder. And that's where you see too a lot of the people in like those those viral videos where like the person just dies, dies like, so like, like feet before the finish line. Right. Like, oh, they literally had nothing left to give, but they pushed. Yeah. They just were either unsure of their limits. It was an off day. It could be any number of things. Because, like, sometimes there's no reason why you have an off day. Yeah. Sometimes you just start to run it, then it, it sucks for no reason at all. And yeah. You feel like death. Yeah. Some days it, you could feel like you have the worst hangover in the world and you run, like, your best time. Yeah, correct. There's yep. no explanation I, for it. So... There's it's, probably an explanation for it. I just don't know. <laughs> yeah, there's chemicals or something yeah. happening in your body. But that would be, um, you know, something I would say to anybody that's starting out is I've had some of my best runs, like, after, you know, a night where I just, like, stayed up and watched movies mm -hmm. and, like, was up till, like, 2 o'clock in the morning and maybe had, like, a couple bourbons or something. Yeah. Um, I'll wake up the next morning at, like, 7 after 5 hours of sleep it'll and that i think like i ran a half mar marathon just because i felt good like i started that run i started that morning wasn't a very you know there was nothing special about getting good shut eye or anything like that didn't even eat breakfast i just went out the door and there's inertia that happens um to me i don't feel good and i've heard this is common until you're kind of in it like right. it takes a few miles until it feels good so if you're starting out and running if anybody is caring at this point um, <laughs> everyone's checking every everyone's checking our yeah. moms are listening right to thanks mom <laughs> um but like the most encouraging thing is when you can keep going for oh, a yeah. few miles that's when it starts to feel good yeah, it's that is... self-worth thing too you're pushing yourself at that point for sure and you might not even have to push but it's like why not keep it's like forrest gump whenever he's like i just kept running yeah like, yeah because you could because you could yeah. yeah i mean what the, my most recent run did that happen that, that or at least i can rec recollect that happening um i lived in oahu for a while right and that's yeah you know that's sea level so there were days where i would wake up and just felt like absolute death yeah like, God, this is the last thing i want to do but it's like 4 30 or 5 in the morning everyone on this island is already starting to wake up because everyone gets right to work. Mm -hmm. So like, I gotta get out there before traffic sucks and before everyone's in my way doing their own thing. Like, so drag myself out of bed, knew that my times were just absolutely horrible and I wasn't doing what I had been doing for like six months to a year at that yeah. point. And finally I was like, okay, I'll, I'll bite. I look at my smartwatch and I'm like, oh damn. Like, I'm killing it right now. I'm like <laughs> way ahead. Yeah. And that's, I'm like, I'll, I'll keep going. Then. Yeah. And like, it, it was just the mentality of it. Yeah. You know, just like a switch. Yeah. So I, I ended up doing like, like 12 miles that yeah. day. And the run that I was going to do was just going to be like a little two mile to get out of there. Yeah. And the next thing I know, I'm like you know, halfway across the, the beach. Yeah. Like, you, it was cool. Yeah. You like lose yourself in the run yeah, and forget, absolutely. forget like, what you came out to do like days like that have that ball with you yeah. and just work on your hand-eye coordination yeah they're just kind of like your your piss off days yeah so. and when you, like dribbling you mean whatever you want throw it off you run past a brick wall just bounce it off the brick wall okay yeah <laughs> Talk i feel to like somebody i, I feel like i'm back. going to lose it into the street or down a gutter or something. i bought it at like <laughs> like goodwill or something yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I just every time i see a pack of them at like a goodwill i just Pick them up. Okay. Yeah, Rocky Balboa style. You just you're working on your hand-eye coordination because yes. when you're running, like everybody, especially lifters and especially especially competitive lifters, they like scoff at cardio. Yeah. Or they're just like, oh, I yeah. always forget about cardio. Mm -hmm. It seems like there's you can't have both. It has to be one or the other. Right. Either you're a weightlifter and that's your workout, or you're a cardio person and that's your workout. Yeah. But you can train other muscles at the same time. I mean, um, sometimes I have a ball with me because I'm, I'm not going for times. I might 
do a short distance, I might do a long distance, but I'm not looking at my splits. I'm not trying to keep a pace. Yeah. Um, to answer your previous question, you work on consistency and pace. Mm -hmm. So you can train at that level and then quicken your pace. Okay. Further distance and faster paces. So you work on one or the other at a time and then switch. Okay. But during one of those workouts where, okay, I'm not going to worry about what my pace is. I'm just going to, I need to go out for a run. I'm going to take the ball with me. Yeah. And you just pass it back and forth, toss it, bounce it off things. Yeah. You see, you know, maybe every morning you run past like a, a market and you always see the same person sitting, out, sitting outside smoking, toss huh. it to him, he tosses it back. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. a thing. Yeah. I, no, dude, it's all I, hand-eye coordination. Yeah. You're, you're building, you know, strength in a different way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that's, you know, boxers do it a lot. And that's why I picked it up because I used to I used to box for a while. Oh, did um, you? So that's why okay. I picked that up because the, the coach was like exactly like, uh, was it Meredith Burgess that, that played Mickey? He was like, I'll take this. Oh, Mickey. <laughs> yeah. Mickey. Okay. Gotcha. gotcha. So that's that's where I got that from. Okay. Um, and we, we did that in uh, in winter track too. Musselman was our, our coach for, oh, yeah. for track yeah. and winter track. Yep. There wasn't an actual running coach. So in high school, it was Musselman and he would... Be focused on the people that were like the popular events to watch that got butts in the seats. Yeah. So like, you know, jumping and throwing and those types of things, sprinting, hurdles. Right. Nobody cared about the distance runners. It's boring to watch distance runners. Uh -huh. So he would just be like, hey, here's a tennis ball. Go have fun. <laughs> <laughs> we would just, and if the weather sucked, he would tell us to stay inside instead of going outside, which also sucked. Right. But in the, we'd be in the A building just running the yeah. halls. Uh, and just you could it annoyed the crap out of everyone because they'd hear this ball bouncing yeah, around there's a bunch uh, of chuckleheads uh, but you get a lot of really good hand-eye coordination out of that yeah um you know and there's other things you can do if you are looking to like just build some definition in your arms yeah carry like half pound weight start start with a half pound weight and run with that you right can, i recommend only doing one because if you run with two half pound yeah. weights it, there's nowhere to put them okay if you get too tired yeah so you want to make sure that you're switching back and forth so it's even, uh, okay. but if you're running with two of them, like yeah. you're stuck with those for the rest of the run or your run's going to be short. Right. And okay. then you can increase the weight as necessary and like you, you build a lot of really good definition that way. Okay. Um, just flex your abs, flex your core while yeah. you're doing it. Um, just be mindful to still breathe. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise you're going to go into some oxygen debt too early and that's where you start to get like side stitches and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, which is you know, oftentimes a buildup of lactic acid. Yeah. Um, so you want to make sure that you're intaking it through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. Okay. Um, when you get that buildup of lactic acid, a lot of times you build up too much like CO2. You're not mm. breathing out enough. It's not that you're not intaking enough, it's you're not breathing out enough. Okay. Because you like the first thing when you're in oxygen debt, you want more oxygen. So you're you're not breathing out, and then all of a sudden you got a side stitch. You okay. got that cramp in your side. Yeah. Start like lean over just a little bit and just exhale as much as you can. Yeah. But if you are flexing on one of those runs, again, not looking for like pace times, yeah. don't necessarily care like how long or how short you run, just flex that core and like, oh, start to get some definition. Okay. Yeah. I think Glamour I stuff. I think I accidentally have been doing things I guess somewhat okay because I I haven't had any sort of like cramping or side stitch or any sort of You're regulating your breathing well. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think you know the things that I read was exactly what you were saying describing um the the one I read um the 4 hour body uh, okay. Tim Ferriss. I know what you're talking about. I haven't read it. Yeah, he has. He has. Um, he has like a chapter in there about about running. And I think it was like he he was describing foot strike, um, and a few other things that I picked up. He he, uh, he said like you're gonna burn more energy if you're like sort of pumping your arms. Right. So he said you're supposed to be more like Tyrannosaurus Rex, like kind of mm -hmm. keep them like just like that. Yeah, and that's the, you can that's the form that you can correct. You know, yeah. a, a, a lot of people you'll see are like you know they're heavy swingers. Yeah, it, that's a cartoon. That's not real life. Yeah, like start with what's natural to you, mm. and work from there. If you don't have somebody to like coach you and tell you, because you will feel a difference. Yeah, for sure. Like a, a lot of people kind of like flap their arms. Yeah, there's so much wasted energy right. in that. 
high and tight. Yep. The only thing I'd say is if you do that like every couple miles, <laughs> yeah, and like shake it out, or else like your well, arms will and, start to like. Get, so yeah. I would do that a lot too. Yeah, um, I, I do try to be mindful of my pace. And whenever you and I talked about pacing before, um, yeah. getting those split times and trying to average the same time per mile. Right. Um, I was telling you to like pick out a land marker. Yeah. And like you got to be there at a certain time in your run. Yeah. Um, I do it a lot if I like shake up my runs. I do it a lot with music. Yeah. Like, oh, I need to be at, you know, X mile whenever it, this, this song, song comes starts. On. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's a um, good idea. Yep. If, if you use the same like kind of playlist. Yeah. 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 I, I have like, <laughs> What's like the playlist? two or three albums. Got? I do full album. Otherwise, okay. like I focus too much on the music. And right. I'm just like, eh, yeah. Eh, 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 what are you like listening singing? to? Um, Every Time I Die okay, is, is yeah. one of them, uh, their album Hot Damn. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I like the Big Dirty. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a, <laughs> actually, that, um, I, I, I'm a big vinyl guy. I like, yeah. I collect vinyl. Oh, yeah. Uh, that album of theirs yeah. was like the rarest, and I'd only ever seen it for like $300 to $600. Yeah. And I finally scored like a reasonably priced copy. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I have like the, the whole collection now. Wow. Okay. I, okay. I tried running to that one. Not so great to run to, in my opinion. But okay, uh, every okay. time I die, hot damn is a good one. And um, boy hits car. Okay, yeah, yeah. That was a that was a big one that I used, especially in Hawaii. Like, just felt like badass running. Like, that's important. You need to feel badass when yeah. you're working out. Oh, I agree. Because yeah. like that helps your yep. your mentality. Yeah. Um, and I had warm up and cool down music too. Okay. Like, I love using prints for like a cool down okay yeah. <laughs> just like because i know it's in my head and other people are like oh yeah. look at this guy like wonder what he's listening to and it's like dearly beloved <laughs> <laughs> and i'm just like oh, yeah, i can wind down yeah. now yeah. nobody knows yeah um so i would use music a lot <laughs> yeah. My, yeah for yeah. my for my pacing nice uh, how did we get on this topic i asked you what you listen to okay no there was <laughs> something that i brought up like oh i use this uh for um Making sure you said, like, if you had the album, you would know, hey, I'm hitting this landmark in the city yeah, I feel as like the song there changes. Was something or that something led me like to that. that to begin with. Yeah. But I have a tendency to just wander <laughs> out there. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do that. I, I always find that funny. Corey Tuba does yeah. it really well. Does he really? I can. Yeah. I can I can uh, hear that. I haven't seen that kid too. since probably, yeah, kid, uh, we're 38 years yeah. old. But I haven't seen him since probably 2004, so. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. He's still like a nine-foot-tall kid to me. He is, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I just hung out. Going, you know, I hang out with him all the time, so. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm up to his belly button, so. Yeah. He's in town then? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he uh, he uh, works with my wife, actually. Oh, that's cool. Every line's back. Everything comes full circle, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So, anything else in your notes? Um, we talked a lot about diet. I feel like we covered most of these points. Um, what about, so diet is one thing, but like, what about you have a run? What do you, what's your routine if you have like a run? As far, mean, as, eat, as far as like what I'm eating, eating, like what are you waking up and doing? Or um, so I'm the type of person that it takes me easily like two hours to actually feel hungry. Okay. After I wake up and I get up like dummy early. Yeah. Um, I like to run as early as possible. Yep. Um, yep. just for like the the cool of the day and there's less hustle and bustle, so I don't have to worry about like you know somebody impeding the yeah. run in my times yeah. um, or getting hit by a car. Right. Um, yeah. That's a big one. Um, yeah. The sun definitely sucks to yeah. run in, like even on like cold winter days. Dude. Like, yeah. 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 Because overheating a big thing. And that's another part that sucks about like, I wouldn't consider myself a tall person, but I'm too tall to be a runner. Uh, um, the taller you are, the more difficult it is for your body to regulate its temperature. Okay. So um, you were saying earlier Corey about... Corey ran like, that half marathon with me. Uh, he Pits probably Pittsburgh. felt like yeah. garbage. He, he was not doing well. <laughs> yeah, you can see it. <laughs> um, you know, and that's that he doesn't have that predisposition. It might seem like he does, but yeah. for your leg turnover versus his leg turno turnover, it takes him a lot more work yeah. for that big gate. Yeah. So he might be able to cover a lot of ground and sure. he might be ahead of you, but going the distance yeah. you're gonna get them every single time yeah so like the the wayne hoopers they're if they're doing the marathons like 
I would probably give him a good run for his money yeah. because there's that middle ground that we got to meet. But I'm going to have more a more difficult time to regulate my body temperature. Yeah. Um, so like winter runs, don't wear a hat. Yeah. Everybody like wants to bundle up. They want to put the hat yeah. on. But like even just like for for the lay person, think about like shoveling snow. Yeah. You bundle up to shovel snow and halfway through it, you regret every layer you're that you're sweating. wearing. Yeah. Yeah. And when you try to take those off, like yeah. you're going to freeze. Um, so, I mean, even with, uh, so you're asking about like diet, what my routine looks like. I wake up in the morning, know your body, no matter what different things like I've always advised you on or against. I always just come back to like, what do I know? You know your body. Do what's best for you. Like, yeah. That's the true science of it. Yeah. Um, so I, I can't eat within like the first two hours or I'm going to feel like garbage whenever I run and it's definitely going to come back up. Yeah. So I, I like to run on an empty stomach. Some people don't like yeah. to do that. Um, but when you are running, make sure that if you're going to drink water like on your marathon, yeah. you mostly just want to use water that they hand to you to like rinse out your mouth right. and yep. spit it out. Yep. If you swallow that, like you're going to upset your stomach, but you're also swallowing like just that spittle, that garbage, like collects in your mouth, that foam. Yeah. yeah. That's going to dehydrate you. Yeah, that's yeah. going to, that's going to get stuck in your throat. It's going to throw off your game. Yep. Just, you want to spit all of that out. Okay. Um, I, I try to drink like a cup of water before I start my, my workout, but yeah. I, I do like a whole warm up routine. Okay. Um, you know, I, I do like a light jog. I usually do like a half mile jog mm -hmm. and then I'll do a lot of like calisthenics yeah. and stretches. Okay. And then I go for my run. I'll, I, I like to do like the 5k. It's what I'm used to. Yeah. That's the, my goal is to usually do a 5k. If I'm feeling better, I'll go further. If I'm not feeling good, yeah. then I'll walk the rest of it. Yeah. But I make sure to actually do the whole thing. I'll walk it. Yeah. Um, and that's those days, like, if you are just feeling like this is the worst day in the world, I just don't have it in me, whether it's mentally, physically, or both, mm -hmm. still get out there and walk it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, get up and do it. And you're going to stick to those same routines with your eating and your diet. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of it comes back to not necessarily what you're eating, especially if you're, like, um, like, high level training yeah it's important what you eat what you put in your body but it's almost if not more important to just maintain the habit of like this is the time i eat this is how much i eat yeah like nobody needs to eat as much as they think they need to eat right like yeah. we're americans we overeat yes like you don't need five slices of pizza you're probably good with one yeah yeah <laughs> and, and all reality like yeah. and you don't need that dessert you yeah. can skip that dessert um so i i make sure to, I, I, I pay attention to the color of my urine. Okay, yeah. Like, if it's not clear, you're dehydrated. Yeah. You know, and a lot of that comes down to what you're drinking, too. Like, I, tea is water-based. You're dehydrating yourself with tea. Yeah. Like, yeah. tea, coffee, which a lot of people are like, oh, I'm fine. I had my eight cups because I drank eight cups of coffee. Right, like, yeah. You yeah. probably do not feel the way that you should feel right now yeah. as a human being. Yeah. Like, your baseline is not good. Yeah. Um, you want your urine to be odorless and colorless. Yeah. I, I had a uh, vitamin B deficiency whenever I was high competition because I couldn't drink enough water to stay properly hydrated. Um, my, um, my body mass index was scaled way into anorexic, but I didn't look it. Like, I, I worked out. I had, like, eight-pack abs. Like, yeah. I, my... my quads were massive yeah. you know from all the hill training and stuff but i my body mass index was just gross i huh. was burning off way too much from what i was taking in and i was severely dehydrated but my drink of choice also was tea and then one day i woke up in the trainer's room at the track over here in, in mansion park and uh, i can't remember the trainer's name he was a young dude at the time and he was just like do you remember any of the conversation we had and i was like nope Oh wow! Yeah, it was you, like blacked it was out. Wild. Yeah, so they actually they picked me up and carried me off the track, and apparently I ran like a sub five minute mile, and then just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they so they carried me in, and I had just this. I had a vitamin B deficiency. My my lips were cracking back my cheeks. Okay. Because I was that dehydrated. Wow. Yeah. So um, electrolytes are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I usually drink like a like a Pedialyte or something okay. like every 10 days or so. Yeah. I'll just like, that's my thing. Yeah. I'll, I'll like put a good movie or series on or like a new album that I bought. And uh, I, I 
I'll sit in like a position where I'm stretching. Okay. So like you can do this at home all the time. Like when you're at rest, you're hanging out with the family, like sit butterfly style with your heels together. Yeah. And put your elbows down on your knees and just, you know, butterfly stretch a little bit. And it won't seem so bad whenever you actually are stretching for workouts and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I'll do that and drink like a, a Pedialyte and get back into it. I um I have glasses of water like all through the house. Yeah. And every yeah. time I pass pass one, I have to pick it up and drink it. Yeah. And that's actually how I got like my hydration back. Okay. Um, but there are diff there are like proven times where it can help your circulation, your blood flow, and just oxygenating your blood. Um, in the morning, like after your run, if you do a run in the morning or whenever you take your shower, just drink a uh, glass of water before you get in the shower. Mm -hmm. Drink a glass of water in the shower and drink one right after. Okay. It all stimulates blood flow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's it's wild. Yeah. But. I mean, I definitely, so I feel like I'm pretty pretty good about, um, like, I, I, I usually feel pretty parched uh, when I wake up. So I, I drink water basically all day long. It's the best thing for I, you. I drink, like, a lot of coffee, though. Like, yeah, okay. Not, not usually tea, um, but, like, yeah, I'll drink coffee, black coffee, uh, nothing in it um no 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 food basically until the afternoon okay so if i run in the morning which is when i prefer um it'll be on an empty stomach if i run late in the day i just started experimenting with because the two runs that i did like the 11 and the 12 i ran like three o'clock in the afternoon and i kind of felt like i was lethargic like I didn't have energy and Did I was like headed at all not really just like I just felt like I couldn't get in you know, like that pace where yeah. you kind of forget yourself I felt like I was conscious of my body the whole time and I felt and like I have eaten like lunch and or anything at this point so, so that when I did the 14 the other day the longest one I've ever run um I did like a peanut butter sandwich about like an hour or two, probably about an hour before I ran, because I was like, maybe I need to not be like, like there's one thing to like be on an empty stomach, but there's another thing yeah. to be like on an empty stomach at seven in the morning versus if you wait too four long, in the like, afternoon. Yeah, you need those calories. Yeah, you need that energy. Yep. Yeah, not okay. Like Michael Scott in the office, like carbo load yeah eat carbo like right before right <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah like, you need to give a little while to set in yeah yeah like an like an hour is basic and it was light it wasn't like a bowl of pasta it was yeah. literally like a sandwich with some peanut butter on it so yeah yeah um so that's yeah that's i don't know well, yeah. there's all these things that are like crafted for runners and mm. stuff like that stick to the basics i know yeah they get, I, everybody swears by this sport drink or that sport yeah. drink like nothing's gonna beat water right yeah, yeah. It's, this is what your body is made to use right yeah. this is why it works yeah um have you heard of born to run it's a book uh is it, it it's uh springsteen no <laughs> so i have no. a song in my head right um, now i'm like um i've heard it but no uh i think i had it i, I can't remember if i gave it's it up there i see it is it second book yeah next to pet cemetery um I eyed that up whenever I sat down. So it's about long distance runners. Okay. And um, I think you know, there's a lot. There's a lot you could get into with that. And one one of the things, one of the takeaways for me was just natural, uh, doing what's natural and not like jumping into. There's there's a whole uh, like kind of section in there about the the debate of whether you should run like barefoot or not um or yeah or no have, I, like i've, I've heard several cushioned arguments souls but if you didn't like... grow up doing that right yeah like you were gonna tear your feet apart yes but yeah. there, there's there's definitely arguments for both sides because like mm. humans were made barefoot like right you know, yeah. and that's where you know you see African teams in their training, like completely barefoot, Aboriginals in in Australia, completely yeah. barefoot, and I'm looking at that just like horrified. Yeah, like I have city feet, I don't have country feet. Right. Yeah. And so, but um, one thing that I always likened that to was uh, the military. Yeah. Because there's very different arguments that 
both have their their worth and both have their metal. Yeah. Um, the, there's the one side that is like, you know, just tribal and savage and like this is the basics. This is how it works. This is the way it's meant to work. Right. And then the other side is like we've developed the technology. Correct. Like, yep. We have we've built Ivan Drago to yeah. defeat you. Like yeah. Use this. It's here for you to use it properly. Yes. I I would agree with both sides. Yeah. Like I could. I guess it comes down to like you read something and then it's like sort of self experimentation mm -hmm. and and finding how your own body reacts what your own experience was with it um i think yeah like i would say that i don't do anything that is complicated or overwhelming i i only drink water um you know i'm not i i don't like uh, yeah I've been do you put this. any of the holistic stuff into your routine like is there anything that you would be worried that somebody would be like, that's, that's a little weird if they caught you doing it. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Um, not like, I'm not going to run barefoot. Um, not really. Um, I think, so, so like, like me, um, definitely with, with, with feet and shoes, um, depending on the shoe that I've had on, I'll feel different in my lower back mm. after long runs. Um, That's where we feel our age is right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I sure. mean, yeah. I mean, waking up uh, the next day after a long run, um, depending on the shoes that I had on, um, you know, I think I've, uh, yeah, okay. So I, <laughs> my wife will recall one time early in my days when I first read that I did try running around with like just sandals like okay. like flip-flops basically because they did go into like that's what um the ancient i'll butcher the pronunciation of their name uh but they're like the desert running people they just run all day long for okay. fun uh and they just wear sandals basically um and so i experimented <laughs> with with basically yeah uh no socks on, just just sandals, and basically destroyed the sandal. Yeah, how'd that work after, out? <laughs> yeah, after a mile, it had fallen apart. So you don't want to run in flip flops. Um, I know that horrifies me to think about that, but I do think that like, so part of my routine before I put my shoes on for the day, before I lace up, like I will put my feet out in the grass, like I like feet to earth, soles yeah, to earth. Yeah, like okay. I need to touch dirt, touch yeah, grass. Ground, grounding. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I do that. Um, yeah, it's just it's part of my like you know calisthenic, my warm up routine. Yeah, and I can show you some stuff for your back too that did wonders for me. So yeah. like we need to get out there stretching or like just like movements. Oh yeah, stretching. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Stretching like a little bit of yoga, hippie stuff, but okay, yeah. like good yeah. stuff. You, I'm you're gonna be that. like, why yeah. didn't I do this sooner? Because <laughs> I did the same thing. I was like, no, no. Like yeah. I had my 17 year old mentality, like. I fake it then, I can fake it now. Yeah, yeah. And then once I started doing it, it was like, oh my God, I was a moron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm I'm down. Um yeah. and that's yeah, that's that's my whole thing. Like I I'll try anything, really. Well, uh, experiment a little bit. Yeah. I'm gonna get out on the track with you. Like we yeah. can do warm up. I mean, you're training for a lot longer distances than I am, so mm -hmm. Some morning you want to jog down to my place, meet me there, we'll jog over to the track, get yeah. a little bit of warm up and then put our feet in the grass over there. It's not real grass, <laughs> but like yeah. soles to the ground and yeah. just do like a couple little sprints on the okay. field yeah. and then stretch. Very good. It, you'll notice a difference. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I, I definitely don't have a, uh, I don't have a warm up. I don't have a cool down. So any of that is, is, I mean, I hope it would help. I want to like absolve myself right now. If it doesn't, I'm going <laughs> to be like, ah, I don't have yeah, a degree. Yeah. I hurt this. myself. Yeah. I had to cancel all my plans. Yeah, I lied about everything. I just thought I was yeah. cool, so yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but there's other things too that like you can work on with when if you do sustain an injury or mm. if you want to prevent an injury, which is even better than you know compensating after you're injured. Yeah. Shake up the workout. Yeah. You know, you don't want to change the routine you have now trying to hit that goal. Like you have your regime. If you start messing with that, you're yeah. gonna throw off your flow. You're gonna, you are gonna injure yourself, and we're trying to prevent that. Right. Um, but if you do add in a few things here and there, like, doesn't have to be for an extended period of time, but like, go work a few hills or hit the cycle or get in the pool and do some laps. 
They're going to work different muscles that by strengthening those, you're not allowing the other ones to weaken. Yeah. Um, so big thing with, I talked about my knees and I lost that cartilage. Yeah. I, my knees started floating and grinding. You know, it was bone on bone because I didn't yeah. have the cartilage there as a buffer. You know, your cartilage acts like a plastic washer whenever you're like constructing something with nuts and bolts. Yeah. It prevents the things from grinding together. So without that, I needed to strengthen some muscles around it that I had been ignoring and muscles that weren't getting worked out from doing like the cardio training and the anaerobic and just straight up running. Yeah. Um, but by strengthening these other muscles, they held my knee in place. Okay. And they allowed my knee to do what it was supposed to do. Gotcha. And that's when I no longer really needed to eat then that entire bottle of pills to, to get through a race. <laughs> right. And I was like, oh, this is actually a lot easier. And that's just yeah. because one day a week I was like, you know, I'd done my run in the morning and yeah. then a couple friends, I was like, hey, you guys want to go to the pool? And then they're just screwing around in the pool or like trying to pick up people and I'm, I'm swimming my laps. Yeah. So there's little things you can do, strengthen those t different types of muscles. You will feel it because if you're, if you've been training this long for a marathon or yeah. even just, you know, running this long without having worked those other muscles, the second you start working those, yeah. it's going to be like, I didn't know I had muscles there and yeah. this sucks. Yeah. But then like a week later, you're going to be glad you did. Okay. Yeah. So lots of different things. Yeah. Very cool. And I'm definitely going to pick up this book. Yeah. I have a couple uh, you, of titles I mean, that I'm going to shoot can at you. Take it with you tonight. Are you sure? Yeah. I've, 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 I've read it twice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have a few other reads that I need to get through before I jump on this yeah. one. I read a lot. That's good. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Thanks Appreciate for having me on, yeah. buddy. Absolutely. Someday we'll do something maybe uh, yeah. more fun for some of the Mo listeners. Movies like, or yeah, something. Yeah. We'll I think we bring can back the Matrix.